Now this is 157. This is a little bit uh, longer calculation. If you remember the steps one by one, I mean, these are never very difficult. Numbers, they change, but the things, they remain same. So you just need to do two, three questions, uh, how to say, by understanding properly, then they, then they become easy. So I'll read it for you and then we will understand. 157, AGD company is a profitable company which is considering, you know, why do they say profitable? They could have told you is a, is a company. Why do they say is a profitable company? I will tell you before, later. I always say that every word in the question is important. The answer lies within the question. I mean, they could have told you that AGD company is considering. Why do they say AGD company is a profitable company which is considering the purchase of a machine costing 320,000? <clears> if purchased, AGD company would incur annual maintenance cost of 25,000. The machine would be used for three years and at the end of this period would be sold for $50,000. Alternatively, the machine could be obtained under a three year lease, again, lease or buy for an annual lease rental of 120,000 per year paid in advance. The lease agreement would also provide insurance and maintenance for a three year period, which means that if you lease it, you will only pay 120,000 per year. You will not pay any maintenance. If you purchase it, you will pay maintenance. Okay. The lease agreement would also provide insurance and maintenance. The lease also contains an annual break, an annual break clause, allowing the lessee, allowing the lease to be exited at the lessee's discretion. Okay. Not at the lesser, but at the lessee, which means that if AGD company wants, they can just make exit from the contract. That's a very favorable clause because it will decrease your risk. If at some point in time you do not want machine, you can just get rid of that. AGD company can claim tax allowable depreciation on a 25% reducing balance basis. So tax allowable depreciation. Now, this is why they told you it's profitable. Because if the company, in order to claim the tax benefit, you must be, you must be having some profits. If you are a loss making company, you cannot claim any benefit. You only claim tax benefit when you are profitable. You should have sufficient profits to claim that benefit. If there is no profit in the income statement, will the benefit you will get? That's why they told you this thing. If they say it's in loss, then you cannot claim tax benefits. So 25% tax benefit. So it means that the depreciation, which we will show on that depreciation, 25% we will multiply and that will be our cash inflow because reduction in tax liability can be treated as cash inflow. <clears throat> the company pays tax on profits at an annual rate of 30%. Okay, so 25% is depreciation multiplied by 30% is the tax. Um, paid one year in arrears, which means one year later. So whatever is in year depreciation in year one, the tax benefit will be collected in year two. Depreciation in year two, tax benefit will come in year three. AGD company has an accounting year that ends on 31st December. If the machine is purchased, payment will be made in January of the first year. So of course, if you purchase the machine, then all of 320,000 you pay in the beginning. If leased, annual lease rentals will be paid in January of each year of operation. So in leasing also you are making advance payment. Leasing is also advance payment. And if you purchase, then of course you will make advance payment. Now using an after tax borrowing rate of 7%, evaluate whether AGT company should purchase or lease the new machine. So whether you should purchase it or lease it. So again, we have to make calculation for leasing and buying. Leasing calculation is rather simple because there is no maintenance, there is no depreciation. So let's first make our leasing calculation. I'll say question 157, part A, whatever, and I will say leasing option. And it is going to be very much simple like before. Let me take this thing from here, this, okay? I'll just put it here somewhere year zero one two three but i will also take year four in this case lease is for four year 
uh, lease is for three year period, but you may have some benefits, tax benefits in the fourth year. So therefore, because you are getting tax benefit in next year, so a three year lease, you should be making a four year calculation. So this is what we make here. Now we have got less space. We don't see this year four. Let me decrease it like this. And let me also decrease these columns. These are very wide. We can see like this. This is reasonable. We can write down our numbers here. Okay. So we'll say our, you know, um, our annual lease payments. And of course, it is 120,000. Your lease payments are 120,000 and starting in the beginning. So you will pay 120,000 here. And you will continue it for three years. So you have to make three payments, which means in year two, you will be finishing your three lease payments. Then after this, making these lease payments, you actually, when you will make a lease payment here, so this is kind of a rent. This is rent and this will go your income statement and uh, it will be shown as an expense. And you know that whenever you show expense, your profit go down and your tax goes down. So you get tax benefit. I would write down here, tax benefit on lease payment, okay? Lease payment, when you make 120,000 here, you start getting tax benefit. And your tax benefits will be shown, uh, how to say, as 30%. So it is 30% tax benefit. So this is actually year zero which is and th this is very important to understand now please pay attention mm -hmm. the first tax benefit you will get in year two because year zero is not fun full year it is just january 1st of year one when i say year zero it is actually first of january of year one so this tax benefit you will get in year not in year one but in year two so the tax benefit from this year zero in year two this one will be again one year later and so on so how much is the tax benefit? I will take this 120,000 and I will put it in year two here, multiplied by 30% is my tax and I put it, multiply it with minus one because it is going to give me a positive cash flow. This is going to be a positive cash flow, okay? Positive cash flow because it is a reduction in my tax liability. I will pay less tax. When I will pay less tax, I will have more cash. I will have more cash. Um, what did I do? I put it 30%. I should multiply it with this cell and then I will write down here dollar, dollar so that it remains there. And this tax benefit will come like this. So you will have in year zero, year one, year two, and year three. And you will find out your net cash flow because there is no other maintenance cost, nothing else. Just you will make some lease payments and because of lease payments you recognize as expense, you will get some tax benefits. And we just drag it here. These are my present values. And here I need to find out my discount factor. At what percentage? They told you that your discount factor should be at 7%. So we'll calculate 7%. So this is year zero, discount factor is one. In year one, discount factor will be one divided by one plus 7%. And I would say it, you know, power one, this one. And let me now just lock this cell of L73 as dollar sign so that we can copy paste there and we put the sign and we make it to three decimal places and we say PV present value and again I will draw one line very much particular about formatting of the tables formatting is important and we take like this and again we will now because these are numbers I can take I can remove my I can ignore my decimals and I would say that 
present value of cash flows or present value of lease or present value of cash flows, whatever you want to call. And we make it as sum and we make total of these four columns. And the leasing option is, so actually you are going to pay 120, 120, 120. You are going to pay 360,000. But your net cost is only 248 because you will get some tax benefits. When you make payments, your tax liability will go down. You will pay less tax. So that should be considered as cash inflow. Your net cost is 248,667. This is the cost of leasing. This was simple. We did it before. Now, next thing is we need to do, you know, <coughs> buy. <coughs> it says that it could per consider purchasing of a machine, 320. If purchased, it would incur annual maintenance cost of this. So now we'll have our purchase option. This is now a little bit more technical and you, you need to be careful on this calculation. We'll take the same table here. Again, four year time frame, and we'll buy the option. So we'll say initial cash outflow, okay? Or you can call it cost of the equipment. You can call it very simple cost of machine. Let's call it like this, whatever you may call, makes no difference. And your initial cost of the machine is like 320,000 now. And you will put here 320,000 minus. This is what will go out from you. And then you have maintenance. Annual maintenance cost. And how much is the annual maintenance cost? Annual maintenance cost is, if I am not mistaken, it is, well, let's say, 25,000 used for three years. At the end, sold for 50,000. <clears> okay. So from this year, we'll start paying our maintenance cost for three years time period. Fourth year, I'm putting only for tax calculation. Fourth year, there are no other cash flows. So I have 25,000 here. So this is my cash outflow. This is also my cash outflow. And What's here? We have a cash inflow of uh, 50, 50,000? That will come at the end of, uh, yeah, we'll say that residual value. Yeah. And residual value, you will sell the equipment in year three for 50,000. So we put residual value, we, we get positive cash flow in year four. After that, I get my tax benefit on maintenance cost. Remember maintenance cost, before you were getting tax benefit on leasing, now you are spending this 25,000 as an expense. So you get benefit on this. How much is that? I think it is 30% tax benefit. So I take this one. 25,000 multiplied by 30%, okay? 30%, I put it here. And it is minus, let me multiply it with minus one so that it becomes a positive number. So this is actually, because we spend maintenance cost in year one, 25,000, we will book it as our expense. Our profit will go down. Our tax liability will go down. We will pay less tax. So paying less tax actually is kind of considering of a increase in your cash flow. So you will get 7,500, 7,500 in these three years. This is your tax benefit on maintenance. Let me call it here so that you are clear what I'm doing. And then you have your tax benefit on depreciation. Depreciation. What happened to me? Ooh. Am I? I have forgotten the spellings of depreciation. So tax benefit on depreciation. For that, you need to prepare a table. Let me make like this. And we need to always create a separate calculation, okay? Always do a separate calculation for that so that you don't get mixed up. So you have to prepare your, let's call it, you know, TAD, tax allowable depreciation. So in year one, now it is not in year zero. 
I'm putting in year one, my asset is 320,000. And how much depreciation we have been allowed? They told us that you will get a depreciation, which is 25% on reducing balance, okay? So this is my depreciation expense. And of this 25%, 30% I will multiply to get my benefit. So let me see how much do we make. So depreciation is 25% reducing balance. So I'll say 320 multiplied by 0 0.25. So this is my depreciation 80,000. Clear? In year two, in year two, your asset is already actually now 240,000. And now you will take depreciation of 240,000. And then in year three, your asset is already 180,000 because we are doing reducing balance method. You remember reducing balance method. So these are your carrying values. Let me call it like carrying value. At the beginning of year one, the carrying value of asset is 320. You charge depreciation 80. So 320 minus 80. The net book value becomes 240,000. Then this is 25% of 240,000. Then you subtract it, you get your net book value at the beginning of year three, and then you have your, this one, depreciation. So you've got three depreciations. And you should be getting tax benefit on depreciation. And remember, when do you get, you, you get benefit? You get benefit in the next year. So this 80,000, multiplied by 30%. This is my tax benefit in year two. I mean, this year one depreciation, 30% of that you get benefit, but you get it in year two. Then on 60,000, you get 30%, which is 18,000. This tax benefit, it comes in year two. And then this comes in year four. But there is one more issue. There is one more problem. So far, these tax benefits are there. You can just take them here and you can put it here like, you know, you can say this, this one. And these are also considered as your tax benefit. So these are your cash flows. You can put like this, tax benefit on depreciation. But there is one more complication in this question. See here, at the end of year three, what is the value of asset? Beginning of the year, it is 180. End of the year, it is, it is, it is 45,000. So your net book value at the end of the year, I will call it net book value at year end. Okay. Let me write down like this. So I would say my net book value at year end. I'm just putting it here for showing you. Okay. 240. This is the same 240, which is shown here. What happens? Your net book value at the end of year three, this asset had only 135,000, 135,000. How much you are selling the asset for? How much are you selling it for? 120, uh, sorry, 50,000. You are selling it for 50,000. So this is an asset which in your books is 135,000, but you are selling it for 50,000. So you are actually making a loss. I would call it loss on disposal, right? Mm -hmm. And because it is a loss on disposal, it also gives you tax benefit. Loss on disposal. I can show it anywhere, 135 minus 50,000. So how much is your loss on disposal? Your loss on disposal is in year three. So these are my tax benefits like here. And by the way, I can bring them down so that I put it here. So I make a loss on disposal in year three. How much is the loss on disposal? It is 135,000 minus 50,000. So I've got a loss. And this loss will also give me some tax benefit because it's a loss. So you get benefit because you charge less depreciation, you know, 85,000, you charge less. You only charge uh, because 
because the market value was less, book value was more. So it looks like that you let you charge less depreciation in previous years. And now you have to get the, the tax benefit on this loss as well. How much it will be? And that tax benefit, that loss happens in year three. So I would say that tax benefit on its tax benefit appears here, 85 into 0 0.3. This is 25,500. And uh, by the way, let me just not confuse it. I'll put it below here because like this. So I've got tax benefit on depreciation. Whatever is depreciation, this 80,000, 30% of that is here. Then 60,000 depreciation, 30% of that is here. So these are the tax benefits of your depreciation and this is your loss and this is the tax benefit of loss. So now I would say that total, um, and by the way, let me put it, I'm just thinking how to make it better in order not to confuse you, tax benefit on loss. And I would say total tax benefits. So there is no tax benefit in year one, of course. We start with year two and we accumulate. So these are the three years and the tax benefits. The tax benefit in year one, year two and year three, and of course in the last year. Are we clear on that? This one was simple, but this one you need to pay attention. This is a tax benefit on loss. Now oh, I go yeah. back here and I just take these numbers, okay? These numbers I need. Once I'm done with them, I don't think that there is any other thing. We had our tax benefit, we had our losses, and uh, we put everything there. And now we say that net cash flow. And net cash flow, you will just make a total, draw a line, take it and drag it. Then you write down your discount factors. What is the percentage? I think it is 7%. I put 7%. For year one, it is, for year zero, it is one. For here, it will be one divided by one plus seven percent. And I would say, you know, power one. And we will lock this L87. And we move forward. Okay, take it three decimal places. And you say PV. And your present value, again, I would like to draw one cell first, this underline. And I would say this multiplied by this. And I take this one and we drag it. And then we can add one row and we say present value of cash flows. So this is our purchasing option, okay? And we are going to add these present values of cash flow. Let me add one more row so that we don't mix things up. We go down there. Present value of cash flows here is equal to sum. And we take all of them together. It is 260,000. Let me put it like this. 260,989. This is the cost of your asset, if you borrow it, I'm sorry, if you buy it, if you purchase, it costs you 260,989. If you lease it, this is leasing present value, which is 248. This is purchasing. In purchasing, you did get some tax benefits because of depreciation and losses, but still the cost is more. So what is your recommendation? You should be going for, and it says that evaluate, whether AGT company should purchase or lease. So go for purchase. You should say that, uh, you know, on comparing the cost of leasing and cost of borrowing, we can say that leasing is a better option because it costs less. So we should go for lease. 
this is 12 marks question done. You don't have to speak or write a lot because most of the marks are, are for calculation. It is just you have to make a two line note. That's all. Then uh, this is part A is done. Okay. 12 marks are done. Part B, if, if you have any question until here, please ask me. Otherwise, I will start discussing part B. Any question you want to ask? Discussion, please. Lease was simple. I know that lease we did previous question as well. It was simple. No. Yes. In purchase option, if you see what we did, we made two tables. We made our, uh, if I make this our final table, in final table, cash outflow, then maintenance cost, and then the cash inflow coming in by selling the asset. Then these are your tax benefits on this maintenance cost. Because when you will spend money, it's an expense and every expense brings you tax benefit. And then you have tax benefit on depreciation and this loss. So you charge depreciation in three years. Very simple, calculate reducing balance. I'm sure you know how to calculate reducing balance. Multiply it with 30%. And just pay attention that you are selling it for on a loss. Asset is on 135 in your books you are selling it for 50. So you are making a loss of 85. On 85,000, you make again a tax benefit. And these tax benefits are positive cash flows. Your question is done. Uh, I would suggest that you should do this part one time, at least by yourself. Now, if I come back to discuss for five marks, whether the lease may also provide non-financial benefits, uh, yes, it does. Actually, financial benefit it is because financially it is viable to go for leasing because, you know, its cost is less. But the non-financial benefit, what I've noticed here was this one. This is very important because if you purchase the equipment and then for some reason your project does not go as you expect, you, the, you, 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 you see some fall in revenues, you cannot do anything. You are stuck with that you know, uh, asset. But in case of lease, they, they, they said that you can exit the, from the lease on a notice. So that's a very big privilege. I mean, whenever you are making a capex, it is always a fear that, okay, if I invest money, what if I don't make enough money? If I have a lease, I can make an exit. This is one very interesting thing for us. So this is your non-financial benefit. Then another is about maintenance, because when you make a lease, you don't take a risk of maintenance. Here we assume that this is maintenance cost. It may go up, may go down. In case of leasing, that risk is also gone. So there is no risk of project success. There is no risk of maintenance. There is no risk of selling it, you know. Here you've got a lot of variables. You say that I'm going to sell it for 50,000, you know. But what if you don't get it 50,000? In leasing, it is straight away. You just pay money, you get your tax benefit, and you are better. So leasing, of course, is a better option by far. Uh, 